In the last year of World War II, the Japanese Empire had many desperate attempts to try to slow down or stop the American push over the Pacific Islands. One of these desperation bomb weapons was the Yokosuka MXY-7, a rocket-powered suicide plane, a flying bomb which the pilot tried to crash into American warships. To understand the reason behind the development and use of suicide planes in World War II on the Pacific Theater, we need to go back a few years to the first big carrier battles. During the war in the Pacific, the large-scale carrier battles, like the Battle of Midway, badly damaged the Imperial Japanese Air Service. Many experienced and well-trained air crews were lost in these battles. Even before the actual kamikaze units were formed, some pilots chose to crash their planes in enemy warships if it was badly damaged and they had no chance of returning home. As the war progressed, the losses on the veteran air crews during the Battle of Solomon Islands campaign mounted to a point where it was impossible to replace them with other combat experienced men. In the second part of World War II, the Japanese Navy Air Service also lost the upper hand in plane performance, as the new American planes, like the F-4U Corsair and the F-6F Hellcat, outperformed their Japanese counterparts. By June 1944, in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, both the Japanese aviators and their planes were surpassed by the Americans. The Japanese forces lost more than 400 carrier-based planes and pilots in the battle, which the Allies had just called the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot. The first proposals of using kamikaze tactics were mentioned around this time. It's unclear where and when the first deliberate kamikaze attacks happened, but Rear Admiral Masafumi Arima is usually credited as the inventor of kamikaze tactics. Arima himself led an attack against USS Franklin at the Battle of Late Gulf, where he was killed, but USS Franklin was badly damaged. The Special Attack Force Kamikaze carried out their first mission in October 1944 during the Battle of Late Gulf. They managed to damage several Allied ships and achieved their greatest success when an A6M0 crashed into USS Sello and its bomb caused a magazine explosion, which led to the sinking of the carrier. If you guys are interested in more great footage like this, check my video about the Kamikaze attack on USS Ticonderoga. See the link in the description. These early successes led to the expansion of the kamikaze program, that's when the Japanese started to look for purpose-built kamikaze aircrafts, instead of converted fighter planes. The first idea for such a plane came from Ensign Mitsuo Ota in 1943, and a year later the actual blueprints were created at the Yokosuka Naval Air Technical Arsenal. The planned usage of the aircraft was to be delivered close to the target area by a bomber, then released. It featured a 1200kg warhead and three solid fuel rockets, which helped it reach around 400 miles an hour in level flight and around 600 miles an hour in the final dive. This made it extremely hard to defend against these weapons after they were released from their mother aircraft. This led to the Allied tactics of extending the defense strings around the carrier forces, and the American fighters focusing on attacking the bombers carrying these suicide planes. The idea came from Commander John Tetch, and in a sense called for larger patrol groups to operate further away from the carriers. Another part of the defense was a line of destroyers at least 80 km out from the main fleet body to provide early radar warning and coordination screen for the patrol aircrafts. The extended range defense worked well against these suicide planes, as they couldn't release early because of their extremely short operational range, which was only 37 km and the slow bombers carrying them were easy targets for Allied fighters. Later versions were designed to be able to launch from land or from submarines using a catapult, though they were never used like that in the end. The only operational version used in combat was the Model 11. The K1 was the trainer version, it was built in one or two-seater, glider or rocket-assisted variant. The Model 22 was an upgrade over the Model 11, designed to overcome the very short range of the rocket-powered version. It featured thermojet engines and used a smaller 600kg warhead. 50 were built in 1945, but they were never used in combat. There were other more advanced versions planned, featuring folding wings and jet engines, but the end of the war stopped these plans. The Oka was mainly used in the Battle of Okinawa against the Allied ships. In April 1945, the Japanese forces intensified the Oka attacks. On 1st of April, six G4M bombers carrying Okas attacked the US fleet stationed at Okinawa. At least one of them was successful and caused damage to the battleship West Virginia. On the 12th of April, nine bombers attacked the fleet, this time they were more successful. A US destroyer, Manertal Abeli, was hit, broke in two and sank. 
Another destroyer, the Jefers, managed to shut down Anoka, but the explosion from above 50 yards from the ship was strong enough to cause so much damage the destroyer had to be withdrawn for repairs. The destroyer Stanley was hit by Anoka, but the huge warhead completely passed through the hull and exploded in the water. Another Oka barely missed the Stanley, and the explosion in the water was so strong it knocked out the ship's engine. Later attacks in the same month were mostly unsuccessful and caused no damage. In the next month, May 1945, again several Oka kamikaze attacks occurred. Three of the US destroyers were damaged, but no major loss was suffered. In general, the Okas made little impact in the war, or even in the Battle of Okinawa, as they were not effective enough, especially against the extended Allied defense operations around the fleets. They were just one of those last-ditch efforts which tried to delay the inevitable defeat. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.